wanted to work a little bit today on adding and subtracting functions. These are composite functions where composite means composed of more than one. So we're going to say, uh, start with this, we're going to say let f of x equal x squared minus 5x plus 8 and let g of x equal x squared minus 4. Find f of x plus g of x. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set that equal to something new and you can set it equal to whatever you want, but you're, what we are suggesting here is that if you add two functions, you get a third function. So that third function we're going to call h of x. So we're going to add these two together. First thing we're going to do is that we're going to take f of x, and it says clearly here that f of x is this, so x squared minus 5x plus 8. Let this plus sign right here be this plus sign right here. And it says let, right, and then we're going to add it to g of x, and it says clearly that g of x is x squared minus 4. So we're going to add x squared minus 4. In this case, it doesn't matter so much, but I want you to see I'm putting these parentheses up here because I'm adding this whole function, and you'll see why that's significant in just a second, but maybe not so much on this one. We're going to remind us, uh, remind ourselves that this is our new function is h of x. So when we distribute this positive sign through, nothing happens. A positive times a positive stays a positive, and a positive times a negative stays a negative. So we're just going to do this by parts. So x squared here, there's one of them here. And here's another one here. That's 2x squared, isn't it? So there's 2x squared. 1x squared plus 1x squared is 2x squared. We have negative 5x. This side doesn't have any x to the first power, so it's negative 5x. So we've used that. And now 8 minus 4 is positive 4. So that's our new function. When we add f of x to g of x, we get this, and we'll name this h of x as our new function. Okay, the next one is very, very similar, and it's just find... Let this be example two. What we're going to do here is we're going to find this time f of x minus g of x. So same procedure as before with one little thing we have to be careful of. Remember that we're going to take f of x and f of x is, and here's our f of x right here, f of x is x squared, x squared minus 5x plus 8. That's how it's defined, isn't it? And it says we're going to subtract the next one. So this negative sign right here is this one right here. Now these um, parentheses, I always put them in braces like this to remind myself that uh, there's a danger of me screwing something up here. So I have x squared minus 4. So here's my x squared minus 4 here. Now hopefully you can see what the danger is here. If I didn't put the brackets here, if I didn't put the parentheses here, the x squared would be negative, but the positive 4 wouldn't get subtracted out, right? So we need to distribute to here and to here, right? Really, really important. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to rewrite the problem to show you what we got. So we have our x squared minus 5x plus 8, right? Negative times x squared is negative x squared, isn't it? So that's negative x squared. And then this negative sign right here, negative times a negative is a positive. So now it's plus 4, right? Now when we go and do our math, let's see what we get. <clears throat> we get positive x squared here, right? This is positive x squared here, and here's a negative x squared here. And when we add those, we get no, we get zero x squared, don't we? So these cancel. And we have negative 5x, there's no other x's, so here's our negative, let's put it here, our negative 5x, and then positive 8 plus 4 is positive 12. So that's our new h of x, isn't it? All right. So that's. Oh, you know what? Let's do. Let's do this backwards and see what we got. We have gotten if we did g of x minus f of x. So let's try it that way. Find g of x minus f of x. Now I'm arguing with you that g of x plus f of x is the same thing as f of x plus g of x. Take any two numbers and add them backwards or forwards and see if you don't get the same number. But subtraction doesn't work that way, right? 7 minus 5 is not the same as 5 minus 7, is it? So that commutative property doesn't work there, does it? So let's look at that. It says here that, if you remember, g of x was equal to x squared minus 4, wasn't it? And then we said that we were going to subtract out f of x. And f of x is, right, x squared minus 5x plus 8. Isn't that right? Sorry. Now remember, it's really, really important here that you distribute this negative sign to here, here, and 
here, right? So I'm just going to rewrite the first part here and say that we have x squared minus 4. Look, neck. Whoa, sorry about that. x squared minus 4. Is that better? Remember, it's negative times a positive is negative x squared. Negative times a negative is positive 5x. And a negative times a positive is negative 8, right? So let's see what that looks like. These things are still going to cancel out, aren't they? They're going to go to 0. But now we have positive 5x, don't we? So h of x is, is positive 5x right here. So positive 5x, negative 4 plus negative 8 is negative 12, isn't it? So there's our math. All right, so I hope that was helpful. Um, we're going to talk about more complicated ones, like what happens when we multiply f of x times g of x, or what happens when we take f of g of x. So that's in the videos to come, so stay tuned, please.